Jaden Show, and here's your host, Jaden Cornelius. It's the Jaden Show, and I'm your host, Jaden Cornelius. Welcome to my show, and happy Sunday. I have a very sophisticated and elegant show, hence the reason I'm wearing my Hogwarts t-shirt, because I'm feeling rather doled up today, because I'm taking you to the opera, darling, and to the ballet, because I am going to speak to friend and phenomenally talented artist, Rachel Nash, all the way in the US of A. Now, before we go and chat to this young lady, I want to show you what happens when Jaden is just singing along in a friend's restaurant and a talented friend appears. This is what happens. Welcome on stage, Rachel Nash, everyone, on the stage behind Fountain. Forget these wide-eyed fears, I'm here. Nothing can harm you. My words will warm and calm you. Let me be freedom. Let daylight dry your tears. I'm here with you, beside you, to guard you.
mind is never appeared together at Loma Moya never sung this together ever It was amazing to sing with that young lady. I don't do mornings and singing classical in the morning is very difficult for me because my voice hasn't warmed up, but it was just such a joy to sing with her. And it was the very first time we've even attempted Phantom. So <laughs> that was super cool. It was super cool. Hopefully we'll be able to do it again with a couple of rehearsals first so we sound wonderful, even better than we did then. But anyway, let's, without further ado, go and meet this week's special guest, the amazing Rachel Nash. Rachel Nash, welcome to The Jaden Show. How are you doing, kiddo? 
Oh, it's so great to be here. It's so great I was, to see you. I haven't seen you for ages. I know, a week is a long time. <laughs> it is. Is that how long it's been already? It's been a whole week, a little more. Oh, it feels nope. long, actually. A week and a day. Wow, it feels yeah. longer. Feels like 10 years. Bloody does. Oh, you need to get back to Mexico soon, kiddo. I know, or you need to come to Virginia. That would be nice. That would be, actually, that might not be a bad idea. Get me somewhere to sing and I might come out. Little cafe. I'm going to do a little spot in Virginia. My dream is to sing in every single state of the United States. Yeah. I've done, I've done three, so I'm a little bit behind. Well, if you sing at the Kennedy Center in D.C., you will have also sung in the District of Columbia. So you got to add that to the list. So two out of that. Okay, we need to be sorting something out. We'll chat offline. <laughs> okay. a little a little J jd rach concert i feel might Perfect. be coming up in the near future so tell me young lady for those who don't know you they've just seen little clips of you what happens when you you know casually bump into an amazing opera singer in the middle of um downtown mexico but how did it all start for you because like most kids not being disrespectful on any way shape or form but most kids are like oh my God, I want to be like Ariana Grande or I really want to be like Whitney Houston or if you're kids of my era. Or, you know, it's kind of like, so it's not, or it wasn't incredibly common for people to go, oh my God, I really want to sing opera. How did you get from being a regular kid at school to an opera goddess that you are today? Well, I appreciate that you've, uh dubbed me an opera goddess uh usually i feel more like an opera goblin but <laughs> take that um i think you know it probably helps that i'm pretty uh the correct term i'll say shit at singing pop music i cannot <laughs> ariana grande she is a queen and i can never attain that sound so we just decided to go a different direction um i'm <laughs> Oh my God. So I went to a really artsy fartsy school. Um, we sang every day. We drew a lot. We painted a lot. Well, that sounds amazing. It was, it was wonderful. I wish I could go back. Um, but unfortunately I'm old now, so that's really in the cards. Um, but I just kind of fell in love with singing. That was always my favorite part of the day at school. Anytime we got to do like a school play or a musical, I was always the annoying loud one. Um, <laughs> and we have a dear, dear family friend who actually just celebrated her 90th birthday. I saw the photo today, actually. Yes. It's super She's cool. A brilliant, brilliant woman with a magnificent story. And she was actually one of the first people to hold me when I was born. Wow. And it just so happens that she is, she has like 10 PhDs in music and education and is a brilliant teacher. And so she kind of took me under her wing when I was maybe 11, 12 years old. And I've been studying with her for many, many years. Wow, for five years now, that's amazing. So, yeah. so how I'm a little older than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 did you kind of start like with classical and opera music when you were 11 years old? Yeah, she she started me with the like the 24 Italian arias you like to sing. Yeah, I've little, got a book here, I think. Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the classic, um, and it was really just to to build a a solid foundation mm. and a, a mini little repertoire for a great children. songs i think one of them was yes yes <laughs> that was on my last album <laughs> yeah. I like, oh i really that was such a pretty song so that and oh my god there was another one that i can't remember what it was now but yeah another one from that book was on there i was like yeah this is how it kind of started i want to celebrate that because they were really oh, pretty so songs beautiful. so yeah yeah giuseppe oh. giordani was a master and uh that was kind of that book let me develop a, a love-hate relationship with uh scarlatti that was okay. that was an an early standing of how you can love something and also hate something okay, yeah. um <laughs> can i ask you as well like so you're singing 11 year old kid mm -hmm. singing opera singing beautiful beautiful music 
when you're like you're finishing school or you've got a weekend you've got some time to chill was you like listening to opera music or was you like banging straight into like Whitney Houston or someone like that I mean was you was you into the genre that you were also learning I hmm. I definitely loved learning about the genre I didn't dive into opera and opera history until I was in high school and I I kind of made this weird deal with myself that I would listen to a whole new opera every day because wow. I because of my my intense ballet studies, I had to do my entire high school education online. And it meant that I had like six, seven hours a day that I was just plugged into a laptop doing school and, you know, Magic Flute, Carmen, uh, Marriage of Figaro, those were my my buddies. They got me through high school. Wow, absolutely. <laughs> um, when I, when I was younger, first kind of getting into opera and classical singing, I honestly didn't really have time to listen to that type of music because when I wasn't singing, I was in ballet class wow. in rehearsals. So I was then being swooned by Tchaikovsky and Stravinsky and Glazunov and Rachmaninoff. So classical music has always been there, but mm -hmm. kind of taken different roles in my life as I've gotten older. And then obviously having to to duet with someone in Mexico that completely bastardized the music. <laughs> oh no, you were magnificent. Oh my gosh, it was such a treat. No, I hope no, like that pop boy that you sang with a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Bless him. But no, so did you decide then, I mean, was it something that you kind of wanted to do because it was a really lovely hobby? You you felt I don't know, comfortable with it. It made you feel that you were something more, something bigger than just a schoolgirl or whatever. Or was it something like, no, I need to make this a profession. I need to see where this can take me. It's a very good question. It's interesting because I, ballet has always been my love, my, my passion. And have this other passion kind of grow later in my life. Mm -hmm. It they've almost dueled at times. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I realized, you know, once I was leaving high school and that age where I need to make decisions and career choices, I realized that dance is a very young career. And if you want to do that, you have to do it first. Whereas right. singing, you can only get better. Right. And yeah. so it's kind of a hope for a a future or a secondary career post dance, where if I continue to study and continue to grow and learn and work on it, then hopefully I will be able to transition later on. So dance is 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 the mot de jeu. However, when you get a little bit of singing in, you still go with that as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, so what are your plans dance-wise at the moment? What are you doing at the moment? Uh, at the moment, uh, I am preparing for a production of uh, the ballet The Firebird with music by Igor Stravinsky and choreography by Ma Kong, uh, who is our director here at the Richmond Ballet. Mm -hmm. And in addition, to Firebird on the same program we're going to be doing George Balanchine's Serenade which is a brilliant piece of work it's it was uh George Balanchine one of his earlier ballets the pretty sure that he choreographed when he moved to the United States and it's really a a movement for peace okay and just overall love like the music is by Tchaikovsky mm -hmm. and he wrote the serenade for strings as he was writing 1812 because he hated that he was having to write this this piece about war and triumph and hurting others and so he felt that it was his duty to write this piece about love and a bit of equilibrium exactly and that's mm -hmm. what art is wow wow so what made you choose? I mean, I know I'm a pop singer that can 
do all right with classical crossover music. But I also know that op like the operatic form, the operatic genre is incredibly intense. You know, you have to be in like pure and like athletic condition in yeah. order to be able to do what you're doing. And not only that, but you've also picked ballet and the intensity of that art is probably off the scale. Like, you know, I've, I've met ballet dancers back in the day and how do you keep yourself um, grounded, centered through two of the most difficult arts on the planet? A touch of insanity helps. I will say oh, absolutely. that. Absolutely. But that's, that's just in life <laughs> in general, says that. <laughs> um, but as I was saying earlier, music has always been there. And whenever things get challenging or stressful, music always seems to be the answer through. Okay. And is that also the, an the answer? The answer, I was going to say. Is that also <laughs> the answer to your ballet intensity if, if things get really tough ballet do you think right I just need I need music at the moment like I just need Absolutely. to zoom out I'm not dealing with this right now because I know you know it can be well just off the scale difficult at times so so, you, so your music is your go-to then yes a hundred percent wow and cool. especially days where <clears throat> like my body is really exhausted or I have a thousand hours of rehearsal ahead of me, or I'm doing a really challenging role. Mm. It's, I once had a, a friend who was a, she was a dancer with ballet theater in New York. And I remember there was one year that I was really stressed about Nutcracker when I was younger. And she said, just listen to the music. It'll tell you exactly what to do. Wow. Amazing. That has just been my mantra since then. Just, mm -hmm. It's there for a reason. We dance to music for a reason. We sing with music for a reason. Absolutely. It's an expression of your inner being, right? Your spirit, your soul, your connection to everything that is, right? But also saying that, are, are you mm, kind of <clears throat> at a point of your study and your career and your life with music and ballet that you can say, actually, this is this might be detrimental to my health and well-being or are, are you able to put like a limit and say uh, 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 this is now pissing me off i ain't going there you know this is becoming too much for me at the moment or this is this is taking away the love i mean i understand there are going to be times where it's just like i'm doing this piece i've got this study going on i'm intense i'm cramming i'm trying to get all these things done and then i understand that but sometimes if there's do you put unnecessary pressure on yourself to fulfill or are you called like i will give my best but i ain't taking anyone else's shit <laughs> <laughs> i i don't know if i'm fortunate but i often feel that the most shit i get is from myself okay. and not others okay. uh, so i i guess i've been kind of lucky in that way and and, that and and do you have that kind of that limit you think okay this is now like this is now becoming more negative than positive that passion at this moment does not exist i need to step back do something different and then come back to it with kind of a new mood or something are you good at doing things like that i think i think that's how it is i think that's how it should be for an artist that's incredibly dedicated absolutely. to their craft absolutely i've met loads of dancers that yeah. aren't like that and it's because and ballet dancers more so that become like oh my you know and you've seen and you've seen movies where feet are bleeding and oh my you know, god and all this kind yeah. of stuff and you're just like but i've also known dancers that have been like that and they're pushing and they're pushing and they're pushing and all of a sudden there's no joy it's pure obsession and desperation and for me that is like but you did this because you loved it and we were just talking what is the reason why you dance to music and why it, do you sing to music it's because it's part of who you are but does it ever get to that stage where that part of who you are is coming from a place of, um, I just have to do it, I've just got to do it? Or does it always come from a place like, I know whether I can do this and I will push myself. However, if it starts to become detrimental, if it's too much stress, then I need to be like, do you look after yourself is what I'm trying to say on a, not just a, I don't mean like a, a physical and emotional, but protecting your passion of the arts that you do. Yes. I'm trying to I'm trying to think that it's a very good 
and powerful question. I think most of my struggles with dance or singing, they always come from fear or a feeling of adequacy. Yeah, not being good enough. Absolutely. That's, exactly. that's artists, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I, the older I've gotten, the more I've had to kind of look at the world around and see how many, how, how brave you have to be to be an artist. Mm -hmm. And that desire for courage is I think what pushes me mm -hmm. a lot of, and that, that desire to be someone that other people see as brave mm -hmm. is definitely a big part of it. And of course there have been times where I've, I've questioned my path and I've, I've wondered, can I do it? Why should I do it? What, what is the meaning of it? And when I have those moments, I often bring myself back and say, well, what else would I do? Yeah. What else is what there? Do I have? <laughs> like, what? Exactly. It's like, I don't want to do it, but I can't not do it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What it's like loving someone. You, you can't choose to love who you love that that just happens. No, but you can pack so, their suitcase and kick them out. I mean, there is that. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> Can't do that with a ballet routine, darling. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and so you you kind of have to to push through that fear and realize that you are stronger and you are braver than you or anyone else might think. Absolutely. Well, and, you are desperately talented. And <laughs> going back to the whole equilibrium thing, do you like, do you sometimes just kind of think, you know what, I'm just sitting back with a Melissa McCarthy movie tonight. Like, I just want to laugh and I want to see something stupid. I don't want to listen to any opera. I don't want to see one plie, one nothing. <laughs> I just want nothing and stupidity just for two hours and a burger. Jaden, <laughs> you me out. My favorite shows are Family Guy, American Dad. Like that is oh, what I come home to. I, I, I can't. Oh my gosh, there are so many movies and like just wonderful pieces of cinematic art or just incredible TV shows that that my family or friends are always like, "Oh my gosh, you have to see this. It's so enlightening." And I'm like, "Just just give me some stand-up comedy and, you know, a a nice hearty salad and i'll, I'll like, that's all i need and i'm good <laughs> that's that yeah, honestly... stand-up comedy i would be surrounding myself with pizzas and burgers on the odd occasion i have to be honest <laughs> are you vegetarian i am not vegetarian oh, okay. i i'm afraid of cooking meat because i i i don't like touching raw meat so i am unintentionally vegetarian a lot of the time okay. but if i'm at a restaurant i'm i'm yeah. getting the steak or the burger or the chicken as long as someone else is cooking it <laughs> that's just convenient and nice basically it's always better when it's in a nice restaurant oh exactly <laughs> when, when when i'm when i'm got downtime here which is not that often it's a cheese sandwich so i'm kind of unintentionally vegetarian oh, yeah. actually, when yeah. I'm, and i don't like cooking it's not because I, i'm scared of anything i just find it really boring and suck and i only cook when i'm at the stage where i could already start eating the back end of a horse I see. Uh, I don't want to wait for 45 minutes for bloody curry <laughs> to be done. I just, I need a cheese sandwich now. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. My, the staples of my diet are definitely frozen vegetables, <laughs> peanut butter, and yogurt. So. Good girl. I know Absolutely. what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Mine include donuts and, and chocolate with that list as well. So. <laughs> so what are your plans? So dancing at the moment with a bit of vocals. What, yes. what are you, how do you see the future progressing? What do you want to be doing? What are you planning on doing? What's already in the pipeline? I, oh, there's so much I want to do. <laughs> and there. Well, you know, you're 58 years old now, so you're getting on the Oh, bit I, know, I know, I know. I'm getting done pretty quick. 58 going on 85, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, the past two summers, I've been very to spend in 
kind of an artist enclave in southern New York. It's on Lake Chautauqua. It's called Chautauqua. That's the little um, community that's there. And it's kind of a, a hidden gem. And might not be so hidden after you just announced it. Huh? <laughs> it might not be so hidden now you've just announced it. I know, the- I know. Shh. <laughs> our, our secret. <laughs> I've only got seven viewers anyway. Don't be, don't be good. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's a wonderful community where every summer uh, artists of pretty much every discipline submit applications and they have uh, kind of like pre-professional training programs for those artists. Mm -hmm. So there's a school of dance. That's what I've heard. There's a school of opera, a school of theater, a school of visual arts, and a school of classical music. And you, so there, oh gosh, hundreds of students. And when I say students, I mean students of like high school and older okay and um the dancers typically are the the younger ones just because dancers are typically on the younger side um but some of the visual artists are upwards of 60 70 sometimes and it's a wonderful environment where we all share a cafeteria and so you can have lunch with an opera singer and a, a cellist and a violinist and and a painter and just learn about these different mediums and these different uh, elements of creativity. And it's wonderful because you could you can really share in a a similar passion while learning so much about other people's lives and other people's art forms. Yeah. And so being in that environment for two summers really made me realize that the thing that brings me the most joy is learning Mm -hmm. and creating with others. And so I, the future that I want is just one in which I get to be a part of creating something new and artistic and beautiful and i don't know what that might be i don't know if that's being a part of a new production of a ballet or uh working with a symphony on something but i just i love to see my my two loves coming together music and dance and i guess voices in with that and so i i really hope to just let the universe lead me in whatever direction where I can be a part of something like that. Would would you ever consider going into teaching or anything like that? Is that kind of your bag or it's more about? I do. I love teaching. I'm fortunate to teach in the past. And uh, I actually got to teach in Mexico. I've been doing that for a few years and that's always a joy. I will say it is a little tricky for my brain switching between the Spanish, the English and the French of ballet. And so that that's a lot. <laughs> um, you, you had me English and Spanish, darling. You didn't even go French in, and I was already gone. <laughs> so. it's, defi- it's definitely a tricky time, um, but it's it's always a joy. And I do I like administrative work too. And I was lucky this summer while I was in Chautauqua, I got to organize a choreographic uh, performance between the school of dance and the school of music. And I was able to communicate with the director and talk with them about, okay, so we have some young choreographers in dance and you have some young musicians who are interested in collaborating with the dancers. Let's organize a performance where they can have, the dance can choreograph and have live music at the same time. And it was, incredible i've never emailed so many people in my entire life but it was worth it and it was just it was also special because i i got and i also got to be in the piece from one of my friends and what made it even more special was having all of the friends that i'd made in the the music department playing live sweet 
I was like, yeah, this is this is what being alive is about. This is why we do this. Wow, so incredible. Wonderful. I want to ask you a question as well. So opera singer, desperately talented, ballet dancer, ballerina. They still call people ballerinas? Yeah, yeah. that works. Desperately talented. You're hanging around with opera singers, visual artists, blah, blah, blah. But you've never mentioned acting. Is this something that you would be interested in or just really wouldn't give a chicken and mushroom pie to do it at all? <laughs> acting? Mm -hmm. uh, man. <laughs> I remember what I was saying about Scarlatti earlier on and learning that you can love and hate something at the same time. Yeah. That is the same deal with acting. <laughs> really? Uh, I, I don't know. I, that's kind of been the, the performing art that I have been most hesitant to really dive into. I, uh, really into my musical theater phase i realized that you know you probably need to take some acting classes that might help a little bit um and so i i have taken some acting classes and i have found that it is incredibly useful when you're dancing mm -hmm. and when you're singing opera like even though the technique and the, the physicality might be different. If you're dancing, you're not really speaking. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the biggest thing I learned from my acting classes was the, the trust in your gut, that mm -hmm. kind of feeling that you where all of your emotion comes from. And once you're able to tap into that, I found that my dancing became so much easier my singing became so much easier okay and so i don't i don't think i have a a talent for a for being an actor like a great actor you know in film and television but i think it's i think it's a really important uh kind of tool i guess from the study no matter what you're doing yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's not going to be rachel streep in the future, <laughs> possibly <laughs> taking aspects of, of that particular art and applying that. I mean, I guess, you know, like you're dancing, I guess, on, on some level, you know, like um, choreograph routines that have been done by many people before, you know, and you have to yes. almost yes. not only be authentic within that, but you also have to act the role as well, right? So I guess... Absolutely. And, and I know as a singer, like sometimes... I really don't want to be up there singing. So I have to find that little place where I have to be the pop star or the classical crossover singer. And I have to kind of act and bullshit my way through that. So I guess, you know, and oh, yeah. that also <laughs> is using your, your kind of your gut to be like, come on, Jaden, you really need to push this and you really need to make this more real, you know, because there are two people that really enjoy it. <laughs> so, yes. and one of, yeah. One of the, the roles that I was fortunate to do recently um, was the role of Odile, the black swan in from the ballet Swan Lake. Okay. And I was very lucky to, to get to perform that last spring. Yeah, last spring um, in Oregon. And that undertaking was one of the, the most challenging Wording, uh, processes that I've ever experienced. Because it also helped that my part my partner was my best friend, so I will say that that helped. <laughs> but it it's such a demanding role, technically, artistically, stamina wise. That is hard. <laughs> and then your own and personal so, demons on top. Exactly. Yeah. And am I good? Can I make it through this? Well, I have to make it through this. And so it it really it taught me that, like I was saying earlier, I am stronger, I am braver than I think I am, and and way more talented is, than you probably think you are as well. 
<laughs> Thank you. I, I need to to record you saying that and make that. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a WhatsApp later. You are talented, you're amazing, you are loved, you are doing this. I'm gonna just do this. This is gonna be a little Jaden mantra. I call it a jantra. That's what you're gonna have. You're gonna put those meditation apps out of work. I am I'm gonna play one of my one of my classical crossover tunes in the background. I That's actually perfect. did. I think it's on my YouTube. Yeah. I did. I I, I I had written a song with a friend of mine called The Light because I wanted to do music that I started singing gospel back in like the the eighties and that's no yeah like late eighties early nineties that's how I got into singing because you know that's kind of when you were when you were twelve right when I was um thirty three yeah no when I, no I was a bit older than twelve actually but not much older thank you um <laughs> so I was um singing then and I really loved the way that I would minister in song like I was a like a like a little mini youth minister and in my in my uninformed and my heavy Christian days but I would really my faith and my gut and my connection to universal God or whoever you know you you however you want to name that was I would really sit and I think right I'm, I'm going to minister in song I'm going to sing this Sunday. It sounds a lot less pretentious if I'm going to sing this Sunday. And I really need that song to touch somebody. Like I really don't want to use that opportunity just to sing. It's got to be a ministry. It needs to be helping and guiding someone. So I would pray and I would, you know, or do all the things that I needed to do at that particular time in order to pick the right song. And there was nothing more beyond special beyond magical beyond <clears throat> any other i mean i can't even explain it when afterwards you'd sing i used to go i used to sing i used to get people to close their eyes when i sang not because i looked like a bloody state but because i, di I didn't want it to be about me i just wanted it to be about the lyrics and the music and that was it and i was a really i wasn't a great singer to be fair like i was a much better singer now but i just wanted people just to listen and it was amazing you know like normally i would even maybe turn nearly all the lights off in the church and we'll just put candle lights on or something like that and um afterwards you would kind of all the lights would go on and these people were just crying and you're just like oh my god they're never going to invite me back but it was because <laughs> i really pissed everyone off but it was because a lot of people it was taken away from just the visual of some young lad singing on stage to being I don't know to to be in a message or an intervention or something like that and um for me as someone who was desperately beyond insecure beyond shy the worst self-esteem i think that of anyone i've ever met in my life to have someone and say you know i've i haven't told anyone but you know i've i come to this church but you know i've been away for um nine months having intense chemo this is my first day back everything you just sung has been about my experience or i just lost my daughter and this is about my ex and you're just like oh man that's exactly what i wanted music to be about as an adult and non-christian so i would you know i wrote my last i mean i've got Amar amarilli and stuff like that on my album because they're very beautiful um songs but um my last album i'd co-written probably nearly half of it and i wanted to write gospel without it being religious so I wanted to have a message about just finding in the darkness of your times, that is when the light is the most brightest. And it's about following that light. And the the the, the guy that I wrote with, who's actually one of my besties and been in my life for 30 odd years, he's just an amazing man called John Bonzo Butler. Um, we wrote this track called The Light and it's very beautiful. And then we were just like, we were recording it. And I think for some reason we were chatting while the instrumental was going on. And I was like, raw man, like you're, he's a phenomenal musician, just like an incredible artist himself. And I was like, put on a new track, put on a new track. I want to do something. I want to do something. And I was really into kind of, you know, law of attraction, law of least resistance about positive affirmations because I had come from a very dark place before I had actually gone into the studio. And I literally said, right, put it on and record me, just record me. And this music was going on. And I was like, um my life is amazing and i deserve this amazing life my life is and i just literally i repeated about 10 or 15 like mantras that i used to repeat every day in the mirror or when i was walking in order to keep me going really they kind of saved my bacon many a time and i re and i recited them three times to this music i said I'm, i want to do a positive affirmation track as a b-side to this track and it's actually on my youtube so sound about that you know that um 
jantra that actually became my jantra but i was literally just listening to myself telling me that i can keep on with this and i'm you know and so it's that you should check it out one day it's actually really the music is just beautiful so yeah so i did that it was really really super cool so going back to but but it is important you know to know that you are appreciated that your talent is you know like i never heard you sing. your father was like your dad is like a, your dad has been one of the nicest people I've met in seven years of living here. He came into my life the minute that the second that I was going to let everything go because I, I was done. And his praise, his constructive um, comments saved me at that time. Like they were just amazing. And he really touched me. And he is like, obviously, he's your dad. But I think just even as an independent um, art lover, that boy was singing your praises like I've never heard anyone sing one of those praises. Like, he, that boy is amazing. And um, so I knew that you were a singer. I didn't know much about your dancing. And when you rocked up in Riviera Maya and you opened that voice, I remember looking at my partner and I went, that was the most purest <laughs> Like just the most beautiful vocal I've heard in in a very, very, very I mean, I've heard some beautiful vocals, but the purity and the essence of that gift was like, rah, I was like, I just want to listen to her. I don't want to sing this bit now. So really, mate, <laughs> severely talented, severely talented. So when you know you are going through that complete like self-doubting, complete pressurized situation. You need to be saying, you know, I'm better than all of this shit. I'm doing this because <laughs> I love it, not because I have to, not because I need to prove myself, but because I've got it. I've done my work and I'm exhibiting this through my passion now. So, you know, Rachel Nash, I think you're an incredible human being. I think you're a bloody talented lady. And I really do pray and hope and send positive energies that you continue on this journey and that you do everything you set your heart to achieve because you've got it going on sister you've got nothing to worry about and don't let any bastard tell it indifferent or auntie Jaden will be over there to beat some of us <laughs> all right oh well thank you. thank you so much for having me and i i i do want to say that i think you need to call, I don't know if it's ABC or any, whoever has the voice as the show on their channel, but I think you need to call them and ask them for uh, copyright payments because you obviously had the idea first to cut out the picture and just have the music. So you deserve that payment. <laughs> well, if, if, if you want to put a word out there, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> No, bless you, mate. no it's, it's it's an interesting journey but the thing is it's about always remembering your passion not your obsession and then no expectations no disappointments this has been my thing like i do everything because it comes from, a, a friend of mine told me like he said to me he goes i've never met anyone like you Jaden. not you are so you work like you do a full like eight to 12 hour day shift and then you do a full eight to 12 hour a day on your music, on your, you know, on your art, on everything you do. He goes, why do you work so hard? I said, because I love it. You know, he goes, but why do you work so hard? I said, because I can't do anything else. But why do you work so hard? I said, because it's something I've done and I, it really, you know, it edifies me and it empowers me. He goes, but why do you work so hard? And <laughs> I was getting like, I'm going to be punching you up in a minute, brother, because like, this is getting a bit annoying. But he basically, and this was actually like, he must have asked that about for 20 minutes longer to a stage where I was actually getting really arsy. And I was like, like, what? I don't understand what you're meaning. You're being a dick. Like, what is this about? And he said, why do you work so hard? And basically I was like, because I have to, because I've been doing it for this for so long. And if I don't have this, what do I have? This has been my whole adult life. Like, and he goes, now we're getting somewhere. Why do you work so hard? I said, because if I fucking fail, I'm done. Like, all this has been a waste. Like, and he went exactly he said this is what we're talking about Jaden. he said you're an incredible artist and you're a really good human being he said but if looking over your left shoulder is positive and looking over your right shoulder is negative you can't do the same in that particular you know in, in one go 
And basically, when we come down to the to the crux of everything, your passion is in your fear to not fail. He said, all you have to say and change that is because I love this. You know, and it's that simple because I right. love this and you can't fail. And if you love it, if you love it, it's not work. You're no. not working hard. And obstacles are challenging. You're not even working. But they're not negative experiences. They're just exactly. teaching you more. They're bringing more into your repertoire. They're coloring your life a little bit more. But you know for well, because you love it, no matter what you do and who you do it with, you're going to continue with or without all of this because it's part Absolutely. of who you are. You know, and that lets the pressure off of you as well. That was a, one of my biggest lessons and probably one of my most angry lessons. <laughs> After 20 minutes of, but why do you work so hard? I'm like, oh my God, I've told you. So yeah, it was really, really beneficial to me. But, you know, you're you're a star bar, you're a trooper, and you're incredibly talented. You have a whole world and a whole life in front of you to achieve what you want. And I know you're going to because you're super cool. And like I said, don't let the bastards get you down. Otherwise, I'll be out there with some British kick-ass, you understand. <laughs> And Thank we, you, Jaden. This, this is treasure. exactly what I needed on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> it was either it, you I or went, Melissa McCarthy, Jaden. I chose you. What it. a bloody mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no, and we do need perfect. to be looking Thank at you. more Thank of you a mate you're incredible it's i uh, thank you for having for being on my show and taking the time to speak to me and we do need to, to we do need to work maybe this year or whenever we can, when things are a little bit quieter for you, because I know you've got a lot going on at the moment, but we need to be working on, you know, maybe when you're next in Mexico, or if I ever get out to to see you to let, we need to record something and do something. Absolutely. Not Absolutely. Singing in um, one of the most lovely restaurants in, in Puerto Morelos in Mexico. Oh, yeah. The yes. best salsa verde I've ever bloody had, mate. I've got to be honest. <laughs> That wonderful girl knows smoothies. how to cook, huh? Wonderful smoothies too. And everything. That's why I sing there. Everything. Free lunch. Yeah. I'm singing there. <laughs> like, they're like, oh, I'll thank you for coming and singing here, darling. I'm just singing for your food. Like, this could be grim. <laughs> it's the best bloody Mexican food I've ever had in seven years of living in Mexico. So yeah, <laughs> be honest about this. You're lovely as well, but it's your food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having that mole enchiladas now. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Rachel Nash, you're bloody amazing. We will keep in touch. Come back on the show when you've got new projects and new things that you're doing doing because it'll be good to kind of to keep keep catched up, keep caught up, keep I don't remember my English now. So keep in touch. Perfect. We'll do it. Yes, please, please. We are on. You just let me know when you've got something to share, we'll talk about it. It's all good. Right, it's my a deal. <laughs> everyone at home has been watching this go now i've got to be honest i'm very disappointed in rachel's social media presence because you've only got facebook youtube <laughs> and there's no dance routines on tiktok i mean there's nothing i mean the girl's got a cut you know she's got so much time on her bloody hands she's got to be doing something about this so but at home you have seen where you can follow on instagram and on facebook and on youtube and i strongly suggest you do. You won't regret it. And you'll be kicking yourself if you don't. So go and follow Rachel. Show her some love and support. And go and check her out on all of her social media platforms. Rachel, thank you so much for being part of my show. We will see, uh, Hopefully I'll see you and your family again soon. And we'll definitely catch up soon as well. Thank you, Jaden. All right, honey. <laughs> take care of you. See you soon. Bye-bye. I am so super lucky for the people that I know. I know some amazingly talented, beautiful, lovely people. How amazing is she? Now, don't get too nervous. There is going to be some more of our rage to show you before the end of the show. But I just want to just remind you, please go and follow her. Please go and show her some love and support on her social media platform. Share her with your friends. Say hi. And like I said, just go and show that girl support. She's a hard worker. She's very passionate about her art. And sometimes it's a, for us artists, it's a very lonely experience when we are just doing everything and we don't get feedback from you. So it's really lovely when you message us, when you tell us what you think about our, our work, our craft, our art. So please go and show her some love and support. That would be super cool. And before I leave you, I want to say thank you so much for spending your Sunday with me yet again. 
for another phenomenal edition of The Jaden Show. I'm very excited already to be back with you next Sunday. So in the meantime, please come and say hello to me on my social media platforms. You can find me everywhere. Just Google Jaden Cornelius with an I-O-U-S or even check out check me out on LinkedIn. Is it Linktree? I think it's Linktree, where you can find all my links to everything in the whole wide world. So come and check me out. Be good. Stay beautiful. I'm going to leave you with a little bit more of our Rachel. And I'll see you next week on the Jason Show. Take care. Stay beautiful. Bye-bye. <laughs>